I'm speaking only for half an hour because a colleague of ours wants to speak on psychology, no? For psychology, something. We should give a chance to him. So, so Lord, Lord, I mean, you have heard about this, so I'm going very fast just to give you an outline, you know? Not in detail. And after that, we have someone who speaks on psychology. Then our doc, aid, Dr. Jega will speak on doping and other matters. Then after that, I'll show you the practical, because you have to know the practical, how it's done, the bottles, and some of you don't know the form. I'll show you about the thing. About in half an hour, we do a practical <coughs> doping, doping test, doping control. Then, then we go further. Okay. Yesterday, see, we had a very good view from the place where we were yesterday, Monam. So this is the view from the top. There are so many people sitting here. And this was the photograph before we went there. A group photograph. We had a lot of sessions, about one hour photo session. You know? So this is a group photo. And this is what we had, the meal. You see? You miss, some of you miss it. You know? And unfortunately, what you know, what thing very interesting. When Georg saw this, he was so happy, you know, the bottles here. He thought it was like whiskey or something like that. <laughs> then after, when he came to know, he was not that, he was so impressed. <laughs> so he had a big laugh after that. Okay, then. So, so this is, I'm talking about overused injuries of lower extremities. Okay. And I think Georg also will speak something about it. So, I mean, he also has this topic, and we talk with him, and I saw, I talk very briefly on it. And you continue. So, what is overuse actually? The term overuse is usually a lack of, you know, balance between the training and recovery, resulting in a catabolic tissue state at the least initially micro trauma of the soft tissue. So, it's, I mean, this is the word. So, this is the picture I can see overuse injury. See? A child here, no, you are asking too much from the player. You know, too much. So this micro, what micro, microscopic changes occur with the overuse injury? Usually, the local tissue breakdown occur with the tissue license, <coughs> lymphocytic infiltration, and blood excavation. The change results in pain, dysfunction, but usually not classic tissue inflammation, neutrophil release. This is one thing. And pre-existing factor. Yeah? Overuse injury, they are intrinsic factor and extrinsic factor. In intrinsic factors like age, you know, it plays a very big role in the play. If they at least are too young or if they are too old, these are factors so use gender, female are more prone to injury than male, okay? And anatomic factors also depend, like, I mean, they, this is where we always say that we have to have pre participant checkup. We don't have this system yet in our part of the world. Pre-participation pre -participation checkup for the athletes is very important to note down, you know. And I have experience, we had a boxer who had been playing boxing for five or six years. Then after that, we, I mean, he was always complaining of headache. We went to physician, neurosurgeon, and anywhere. A lot of doctors, no one could diagnose it. Then the MRI came, we did the MRI, he had a glioma. See? So sometimes the pre-participation is very, very, very important for the athletes. So an anatomic factor is a bone, bone leg discrepancy and muscle imbalance. Yeah, there are many factors, you know, joint extremities and flexible of muscles, weakness. This, this you have to take into consideration. So please, please participate check is very important. So this one picture I said, you know, about the young lady, especially with the young kids, you know, you have to be very careful about examining, you know, leg leg discrepancy and other cardiac problems if they have. So you can catch it very young and you can catch it very early stages. So, Children, please, I think we should have in a team of pediatrician also because we are not, a, I mean, expert in that. So in your team, when you have a children, I mean, pre-participant checkup, please involve a pediatrician. They will help you a lot. There are many diseases you don't, we don't know about the pediatrician. So extinction factors are techniques error. That we talked about yesterday also, we have talked about it. And training errors, you know, like the training techniques, now this has changed so much that because of training errors are doing a lot because if the 
if the I mean courses do not have enough training and they, if they don't update with the modern things and the, these are training errors of the poor equipment. This is one of the things we always face. We don't have people are playing with the same the runners are running with the same shoe for four years, three years, you know. <coughs> and environment training, overtraining. Overtraining is a part of the why in our place, you know, what you do, we don't train much and just before a month before the game or two, then we start vigorous training, you know. And and at least they just listen to their gurus, do whatever they think. And this is one of the most problems, one of the most I mean the problem we face is overtraining now at least. And you know, the how overuse injuries are classified. You know, this is a simple classification. There are many classifications to tell you frankly. In each country, I mean in Europe has one classification, German has other classifications. But to, I mean we I I consider the best is simple way is just to say. Grade one is when pain after activity only. Grade two, pain with the activity that does not restrict the performance, okay? But may affect the performance. Third, pain with the activity with restriction and moderately to severe affect the performance. And fourth, pain occurring with activity and at rest. So this is a simple way of the four categories. You, I mean, all of you will get the handout, please don't, you don't have to copy, please. So, overuse injuries, there are a lot of overuse injuries of low estimates. Let's say you look at philotibial band syndrome, trochanteric bursitis, public tendinitis, patellofumous joint pain syndrome, patellofumous, sinus applica, interpatellar fat pad syndrome, a lot. So, I'm going to talk only some few which I, which we can say to day to day. And stress factor, yeah, this is where we miss our diagnosis. A lot of time we miss this diagnosis. And it's hard to diagnose. Sometimes x ray doesn't show. Sometimes even MRI doesn't show the stress factor. It's very you know, early stage. But sometimes what do you think? I think we should take consideration of pain. You know, the part where the stress factors are most evident. So you should take the, the site where we have a stress, stress factor matter, mostly. And actually tendinitis and plantar fasciitis, these are an exception. These are these are some of the like <coughs> ITD. This is what you call iliotibial band syndrome. <coughs> And here you have a pain in the aspect of the knee. And that's due to a dull training error. That is due to sometimes what happens is when the sudden increase in training distance, which is usually with distance player, when the training is increased and word speak and um, hill running, these are the, some of the factors that, in, that increase it. And pain. And pain on flexion and extension. Okay, these are clinical. So these are irritable. Sorry, I might. I don't have this. It doesn't work. The muscles I'm just showing there. <coughs> yeah, treatment. You know about the treatment. I'll just give it one. Then next, I'll skip it. You know the best treatment for the acute. I mean, when the brain is the rice, the policy of rice, R I C or something P R I C, something P R I C yes. And the re reason I say rice means in our part we need rice, so everyone remember this word, you know. R for rest, I for <coughs> icing, C for compression, E for elevation. Okay, rice. And we have the, I mean, this part, I mean, you will deal, it, deal with it because the ultrasound therapy, you know, very elevating biomechanical, and it is ID and really corticosteroid in this. This I am really against. Injection. Again, yesterday also I told you that we have come with the policy now. In Olympic, no needle policies. Injection can be given only in the station, not on the side of the field, field of the field. So these are gluteus muscles. Okay. And the aggressive syndrome. Yeah. Pubic sympathies. I don't want to talk about it because our colleague has on the first day talked about. So this, this we have, I mean, our doctor has spoken on the first day about it. Uh, so, I mean, now 90% I mean, of the injuries in the sports is knee injury. That's very, so we should deal a little bit with the knee. The structure of knee, structure of knee, we should know about it. So this is what I said, this is a rectus femoris, uh, let's tell rectus femoris, patella tendon, patella, and this is meniscus, okay, middle meniscus. This is a middle collateral ligaments. So these are the sorts of ways you have the maximum injury. Okay? So, so the anatomy of a knee. It's simple, I mean, for the orthopedicine and others. 
but this is this is just a simple, you know. We say ACL, PCL, we have a lot of ACL, PCL. ACL means anterior cruciate ligament, this is here, okay, and PCL is here, posterior cruciate ligament, and this is medial collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament, this is lateral meniscus, and this is medial meniscus, okay, and the femur and the fibula, at the maximum we hear and hear is ACL and medial collateral ligament or meniscus tear. Okay, these are the things where you have the meniscus. In my next lecture, it was a meniscus, so I, I complete here. So this is where the injury, the anatomy, this is the anatomy of the knee, and about the meniscus injury, you know. Now how, mechanism, see here. The ACL tear, see here, the, the twisting of a leg, injury occurs when the bones and leg twist in the opposite direction, under the full body weight. This is where the ACL, <coughs> this is where the ACL injury, okay. see this is the figure, how it's the twisting. This is how the ACL injury occurred. And posterior, PCL, see, landing on your knee. And this was shown yesterday by, Joe also had this in badminton play, remember that? Eh? So PCL, this is a posterior crucial ligament, you know, here you see the tear. So meniscus, this is where everyone talks about buckle and the tear, flap, tear, radial tear, and other tears, see. This is the meniscus. <clears throat> so the meniscus here, so you have a bucket handle tear, means there's tear right in the middle like this one, and longitudinal tear, radial tear, or and I mean flat tear. So these are the usually tears you see in the meniscus. So <clears throat> now I'm going with the battle of femoral disorder. This is one of the very common syndrome in the world. So excessive torsion, deformity of femur and tibia. Eye and lateral position of patella, and shallow femoral trochlea, and flat foot. These are the causes. So here I'm saying, see? Next time. The same picture. So this is what you have injury of a young athlete, gymnast. And what are the anatomical factors that may contribute to patellar femoral disorders? The factors soft tissue, lack of vastus medius, oblique muscles. Overdeveloped vastus lateralis muscle, increase in vertebral angle, and light lateral dyspnea, flat foot, flat. Foot, you know, this is the one from one of the things we see in our part of the world. Because the shoe we wear, we wear from the childhood, you know, like a chopper, you know, they are, they are not arched, they are simply flat, you know. And especially when the child, you know, in the children, when they have flat foot, we can develop the arch by what in, in Europe and what they do is they take to physiotherapist and they put him. I mean. The child goes to physiotherapy and they get a bottle, you know, wine bottle. They lie down, they put a, it was a very simple isolate and it's very effective. The wine bottle, you know, design, they put the child food there and do the exercise on the wine bottle. You know, every day and that brings us in an art, you know, because it's a flat food. And there are many ways. I'm just simply, I saw one and I thought it was very effective, you know. So that's the other. That is one of the one of the causes. And flat foot we see a lot in our part of the world. So that's why I say screening of the children with the anybody. And clinical syndrome, you know, this is all just to tell me. All I mean, if pain is the main cause that come to you. Players come to you if they if he or she doesn't have a pain, they'll never come to a dog. Pain is the number one. And you can when when the SH come to you with the pain means yeah, he or she has a severe pain. That is to understand. Minor pain, they don't mind it. No. So when the, when someone comes with the pain, then you should please see the athletes, ask questions about long pain, and then go in detail. So hamstring, I mean hamstring, this is what you heard very much about in the hamstring injury and some provocate in football, especially when someone hit from back, you have their saying. So hamstring injury is a bicep femoris, the semi tendinosis, and the semi membranous muscles injuries. So I show you in a picture, you say. So running, all of a sudden, jam. In the tear in your hamstrings. And this is a patellar femoral joint pain syndrome, PF, we call it PFJ. This is a very common because of the knee cap, you know. So here I again I'm saying about knee cap, knee cap. This is here. The knee cap is here. The, the femur here, it should glide in the middle, you know. Sometimes when the kneecap doesn't glide in the middle, on the side or on the side, you get pain. And it's a, it's a band, this insufficiency of this thing. 
Uh, so these are the things with where these when the knee kneecap doesn't glide in the middle, it's on the side they need to get pain. Okay? Sometimes the wearing of the battle arm and sometimes the wearing of this cartilage, you know, that get pain, gliding pain. <coughs> old people, for old people, that is the reason when the pain is. And as you say, it's the most often as a result of overuse. Battle tendon get inflamed, especially in basketball, volleyball. Triple jumpers, long jumpers, kicking at least, leg lifters. Okay. <coughs> so, what ankle injury? This is a very important. You know, we have a lot of ankle injuries, like and mostly we get sprain or strain. You know, so this consists of soft tissue injuries, known as sprain. Okay, soft tissue injuries are sprain, and when it's bony, this is when bone is involved, it's called strain. Okay? With sprain, medial ankle, <laughs> medial or the lateral ligand may be disrupted depending upon the mechanism and produce the injury. All sprain consists of tears of ligaments. When sprain, when you hear the word sprain, means there is a tear of ligament. It might be a partial tear or complete tear. Okay? Which, by, which may be a microscopic or complete disruption. <coughs> I saw some. <coughs> Any sports, you know, can have the sprain. I'm speaking a little fast because we, I have only half an hour because I'm going to give other time to my colleague who is speaking on psychology. So these are the, I mean, anatomy. This is the anatomy of the ankle. It doesn't work. This is medial side and this is lateral side of the knee. So in next, I'll show you the thing. Up to 11. Okay, okay, okay. So these are the seed. This is the ligament of <coughs> so this, this is talofibular ligament and uh, fibular calcaneum ligament. And in, in this, sometimes you have, you have micro, it's partial half tear, and sometimes you have just micro tear here. So what what do you see? You know, in the, in the sprain usually, this is a picture is swelling. The first thing you see the swelling. Inflammation, see this picture, just compare the two, two, two foot here, two ankles, and bruising. You, a player come with this, you can say it's a, it's, it is a sprain for the first thing, it might be a strain. It might be a fracture even. But with this picture, we can say that it's a sprain is there, there is a sprain there. So, the mechanism, see, if it is an inversion fracture, then you have a tear of the, this, this ligament here. It's a lateral, fibula, talofibula. When you have the inversion, then you have a middle called ligament tear. When you have the rotation, there of this, yeah. So, typical and fracture, you see, is the fibula on the distal end is fracture, this ligament is torn, other ligament is torn. This is a typical picture you see, the player. And see, this is what the mechanism, inversion fracture, when it's running, with it shoes here and there, then you have this sort of fractures here, see. The fibula is fracture, tibia is fracture, tibia fracture, fibula fracture. And when the inversion fracture, that's the opposite to that, then you will have a tibia, the distal end of tibia fracture, and the fibula on high up there. A child here, a good picture. See, see his foot here, the child. Yeah, so, inversion. You know, when you land up with this, then they'll have some. So, outdoor rotation. This is also another mechanism for the ankle sprain. So ankle sprains are classified. Like ankle sprains are classified in grade mm -hmm. one to two. I'd like to use the other one. Grade one demonstrates no laxity and is associated with minimal tear to the ligament. Second, demonstrate a mild or moderate laxity. Third, grade three sprain the complete disruption of the ligament involved. And usually it is as an unstable joint. And as you say, it's been how it is the rest, <coughs> management, icing, compression, bandage. The second, non NSID, exercise based on rehabilitation. It is a minor tear, you don't do anything, you are just re we go conservative. And when it's complete tear, then we go for operation. Like, like I mean, repairing the ligaments, lateral colloid. In Germany, usually they repair it, very, very complete tear. And here they say rest, you know. 
the ankle when the ankle sprain after ankle sprain is resolved, it takes at least three months to come back to the to the play at least when you complete the goal. And this is actually I said before, absolutely the thing. So this is one of the common things we face in our part of the world, the stress factor. It's hard to diagnose, sometimes we go and diagnose it. And we can diagnose it only on the basis of pain. And what is stress factor? A common overuse injury of an athlete in a military request. This, this word stress factor came actually from the army, you know. They call it mass fracture. We, before the sport, in the 18th century or something, they had diagnosis, they said mass fracture because they are massive in the bones. You know? So it's usually a made of tassel bones. <clears throat> and so we always hear that, I mean, stress factor in the lower extremities. Now we have come across the thing, the stress factor on upper extremities as well as the cheeks. That is noted, you know. That's something new we know. So when someone comes to pain and you doubt of the stress factor, then you should always ask the athlete some question like change in his or her training regime, including increase in distance during the training, okay? Training harder, playing playing surfaces, new footwear, okay? Female athletes must be questioned about the menstrual status, menstrual status, that's very important history of smoking, and nutritional irregularity. These are some of the factors that lead to the stress factor. And stress factor of the femoral neck, repeated microtrauma, that's one of the cause, often seen in the runners with the persistent groin pain. Our groin pain we had talked about, no? yesterday, groin pain. Pain increased with training. These are the symptoms which lead to the stress factor, see? I mean, if, if I got this x-ray, no one said it's a stress factor, but here, see, when you go through it, you see a mark here, this is stress factor is like. So MRI has helped us a lot. Before we didn't have MRI, I mean, it's 70s or 80s, and then in the beginning of 80s, mid 90s, we have MRI. Now, MRI is not so expensive as before. So it's a very good instrument, very good modality that help you to stress factors. That helps you to, I mean, find out the stress factors. So, so where you got space factors, you know, see, most common site is tibia. So this is why, because the most common site here, they may be anywhere, but the most common site is tibia. And pair of tassel here, this bone here, and pubic region here, coccyx region, and they put periphery here in this region and in the hip. So these are the most common sites where you find stress, you find stress factors. And <coughs> these are the sites. Okay, in the middle tassel, you know, in the foot, we have the second middle tassel here, and the second on the fifth base here, or here in the navicular bone. These are the most common in the in the foot. So uh, and the games location of location and middle tassel general with football players, basketball players, gymnastic, ballet, military training. Okay, and middle tassel base, but I said sorry before in the base. Or the, or the second day, second middle class is ballet, and middle class in tennis and ballet players, sismoid bone, and the foot running, ballet, basketball, skating, and navicular bones, basketball, football, runners, talus, pole vaulting, calcanium, military drills, running, aerobics, fibula, running, acrobatic, aerobics, ballet, and race walking, tibia, running sport, running sports, Dancing, ballet, patella, running, huddles, and femoral neck distance runners, especially with the distance, the long distance, and marathon runners. Pubic ram, military drills, and distance runners. So mostly distance runners <coughs> and ballet, you know, ballet, they have mostly this. And treatment, uh, treatment is prolonged immobilization, relative rest are required in, in stress factor. In real case, bone grafting, and anterior tibial stress factor are, is required to obtain immune, you know. Tibial, anterior tibial require long time to heal. And what you do, I mean, like I, as a sports doctor, what you can do, the athlete acti must, activity must be reduced below the threshold of symptoms, okay. This may accomplish by the skeleton of the reduction of the increasing sport, inciting sport, immobilization that we have to do, immobilize. And non-weight bearing of the lower extremity, use of orthotics means the device, you know, you have a lot of device, ankle, ankle support and all this.
then how can it prevent stress acid? Decreased estrogen level in female as this may be prevented by use of oral contraceptive. Okay. Fields are decreasing the activity intensity. Frequency of workout to be allowed to return to the mix. A gradual increase in training load. Gradual for individuals who are not physically fit also be recommended. And yesterday we had talked about this calcium supplement, you know. We had helped in some extent. We said the 800 mg a day has been also shown to be a, some value in, in the mineral density in the bearing Athletes must be cons um, conscious against the over generous dieting. That's one of the thoughts, especially gymnastics, you know, over dieting. If an eating disorder is suspected, the athlete should be referred to the psychologist or psychiatrist for proper testing of treatment and for counseling. Okay. <coughs> so, when the athletes, you know, behind the athletes, so many people are there, master, board trainer, trainer, doctor, and president, and journalist, everything, you know, this is what a player requires. And the most of the question I get, when the person is at the coach comes to the doctor again, Will you be fit for work tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Will you be fit for game tomorrow? This is what the doctor feels. This is a quick set. All of we have the same. When the player is injured, the doctor writes three days rest or five days rest, the coach says, no, 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 don't hear that doctor. He doesn't know anything. They go and play tomorrow. Then next day, he had a sprain, partial sprain, or partial tear. Then he comes to the doctor. We'll see another doctor. We'll see another good doctor. Yeah. <laughs> I give you a good example of my football player. We had a football player, very good, a striker. And he had a new injury, he came to me, and I said, no, please rest, you have, I think, partial tear of ACL. So I write to rest, we do an MRI, and they had a game next day. And the manager took that guy to another doctor who was not a sports physician. They put him a injection, you know, steroid, and not, I mean, you know, okay, the boys was good. He went and played. Another good company. Oh, yeah, yeah. He kicked, and he went and kicked the ball, and he hit the ground, he had ACL, PCL, both turn. <laughs> Complete turn. He's invalid, he's not playing now, he's out, out of the game. Then we had to take him to Bangkok to operate. You know, they operated in Bangkok, then he came back, rehabilitated him, but he could never. Here, he has gone out. He is now afraid to kick the ball. Psychological. He's afraid when the ball comes. So that is a good example. You know? So I always say to my coach, I say, when, I, when a team is given to me, the first question I ask the coach is, will you respect my prescription? If, they, if you respect my prescription, I'll work with you. If you don't respect my prescription, if you don't take what I do, then I'm not going to work. The first condition I ask the coach, the trainer, if he agrees, then we work. That we also make the habit. So the coach, they have you. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, please? Yeah. Yeah. You're telling about the stress factor. MRI hardly affects any stress factor. So would you go for a bone scan or? See, for the bone scan, yes. So good, good question. But today the bone scan is very hard, you know. What happened is we have also bone scan in Nepal, two bone scan. And the, the material I'm doing with this, I should talk come from Bombay. <coughs> Sometimes you have to wait. I mean, they do bone scan twice a month. Twice a month only. You have not regular. And it doesn't, we don't, we don't have, I mean, it depends, you, have, you can't wait two, 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 two weeks or three weeks for that. So usually we go for MRI, and I said, we go on the clinical symptoms. If you suspect of the, especially if it's a marathon runner or something runner, and the site tibia, which is the most common stress factor, or the food, most common site, then we are a little bit, I mean, skeptic and give rest for some time. And by the time we do MRI, or something we have to repeat, you know. On the beginning, sometimes you don't catch it. You know, in the yeah. first, sometimes come with the stress factor. You do the MRI, you don't get anything. You say very. And sometimes, what do you have to say? You have to write in the report MRI. A management runner suspecting of stress factor of this thing. If you write that, then the radiologist look at the thing, especially with the with the eye of stress factor. Otherwise, if you just send the uh, so send for MRI. No, I mean he doesn't know what it is. he he look for the fracture or some tumor. Suspecting of tumor, he said, it's a, it's a normal in anyway. So you have to give a clue to a radiologist that what you are looking for. And sometimes with the first first MRI you don't see. And you do after two weeks, then you see. see? Because we got MRI over there, 9,000, 10,000 rupees. Yeah. But most time you can get it for maybe 1,000 rupees. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It's quite cheap over there. Yeah. And you can get the next day. And mm -hmm. But the question here, you know, I tell you one thing. Some of the players are so educated, they go to internet. Doctor, I, won't, I don't want to get, I mean, like, I mean, um, I mean, X-ray because of the radiation. Radiation. And I should talk. I said, I don't want to get radiation. No, is there the other way? And MRI doesn't have that. You know, MRI is magnetic. So these are the questions sometimes you get here. Yeah, and you have to respect them. Especially the female. Yes, they respect. So these are the questions you get. But it's very difficult to satisfy a satisfy player. Yeah. Clinically, you know it is a fracture. But it's very difficult unless we get something in Britain. Oh, yes, 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 yes. If you try to give him a race, a marathon runner, if yeah, you try to give him a race, if you miss a, I mean, one marathon, then he'll come and kill you. He'll come and shout, he'll protest, you know. Oh, this doctor, we have to change it. So these are things you face in your life. Any questions, please? So thank you very much for your attention. So we go forward to the next lecture.